All right, it's that time that we go over results from the working of the animals. You saw that a couple episodes where we sent all the bison through. So we're gonna give you some updates, some results, kind of what we found and give you the status kind of of this herd and go from there. All right, stick with us. So behind me is the buffalo, but since we're actually standing here and uh, we're gonna take a walk through the pasture and kind of show you the different animals, review these results and stuff. The pigs are just right here. And we never showed you actually in the film, but we separated poor little Hogrid. This is our little Hogwarts. And uh, we got little Hogrid. How huh, little dude, huh? Uh, yeah. And uh, they're a lot bigger. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> Probably are. since the last time you saw them. And then hey, we girl. got Ariana and uh, the one who must not be named. So we have actually split their, pa their pens crudely in some way and it's working but there's two different pens so I will tell you Hagrid has actually burst through and been with the females my intent was not breed the females probably until February they're probably bred so we'll have I guess a lot of we'll deal with whatever happens happens at that point so I actually haven't figured out whether or not I want to keep both females we might try selling piglets uh, just for feeder pigs and see how that goes. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens when we go from there, right? Day at a time. But Hogrid is still around and he's been doing his job more than he should. <laughs> All right, let's check out some of these buffalo. And we're going to try and show you some of the animals that we'll pinpoint specifically. Um, <clears throat> we have only 23 in this herd that are left from working, okay? So we actually have those three that we had broken off and sold. And then when we were working them, we separated off another three. So we actually only have all three, uh, 23 total animals here. Um, we have 21 females and we actually have two bulls that are sitting off over there. So um, the herd is a little bit smaller. Part of the reason for that was just to make it a little bit easier on the ground, the grasses, not have to rely on so much hay, all that kind of jazz. So anyway, we posted the video of us working the animals and we got the results. So we wanna share those with you. So some of you guys asked how the bulls were doing and the bulls actually are over here. Let's go wander over there and see if you can see them. So our first summer, we had some worming issues and some of the animals just took a hit. And you guys can go back and watch videos. We've documented that before, it's, it's out there. So of the two bulls, Ahmed didn't really get affected a lot. Bartok did. Bartok is the guy with a red face right in front of us. He's looking that direction. Um, Ahmed is laying down on the ground next to him. So you look at Bartok, he looks a lot better. I swear he was like near death at one point. Um, so just bad. didn't look very, very good at all. Oh, well he's sniffing the ladies. So he's a lot more interested. So the two bulls, um, Ahmed is over 1600 pounds. Oh, there he is. There he is, he got up. He's over 1600 pounds, Bartok is just within like 50 pounds of his weight from two years ago. So he's actually about 100 pounds or 150 pounds less than Ahmed, but uh, he's always been just smaller than Ahmed. So he's actually more feisty and more of a dominant attitude than Ahmed is. But So they've been starting to spar a lot more. They've been doing a lot of fighting. You saw that in the other one where we did all the poo and the maintenance here in the pastures and so forth, but that's their weights. They're doing good. I think this year we're probably going to be able to get them back up to and beyond even what they're at now. So anyway, they're both active with the chicks. They're doing well. I see you. A couple years ago when we first bought the animals, we had the weights that they were given at the time that we purchased them. And that averaged out to be 800 or 950 pounds on average for the herd. And that was 30 animals. So we go forward a year. We didn't have all that stuff set up, so we couldn't really weigh them. And so we don't really have anything from that, but we had had that worming issue. So then we come to this year and these girls have actually improved a lot. We used to have only 11 that were originally a thousand pounds or more. We now have 13 animals that were over a thousand pounds. We have more that are over 1100 pounds than we had before. And uh, did I say the average was a thousand, a little over a thousand pounds on average for the animals. So, you know, when we look at that, it's like, wow, you know, you didn't, gosh, that's just, 
Hey, Mary. Girlfriend, you've had a better hair day in some days, and today ain't it. <laughs> It say, say we just got an inch of rain. It's wet outside. Yes, we just got an inch of rain. But so anyway, the, the girls have been all doing really well. So they're all over, on average, over a thousand pounds. So that's where we're at. That's the stats on the buffalo, the herd. There are a few that still have some problems, actually. And so some of those is Aaron. Okay. So that we had two babies. Uh, this is good to find. We had two babies calves this year, and those mothers. Um, have like a tale of two cities kind of a thing. Um, they look different and their weights are actually different. So let's go ahead and illustrate that. We're trying to walk in this pasture with poo and ground is all crazy. So forgive us on the camera. Let's go find those two ladies and let you know. So the first animal I just want to bring up was 98. That's this one right here. She just turned around. She's walking away. This one took an amazingly huge hit, like massive 18 months ago. And she had a calf that year and she was just looking bad. She is now over a thousand pounds, believe it or not. Anyway, she's over a thousand pounds. She's doing really, really well. The one behind her, let's see if we can get her, is 99. She had a calf this year and she took a hit because of, well, we'll get into that later, but she is actually looking pretty decent. She has rebounded really well once we took the calf off. She started putting weight right back on. She's doing good. These calves will suck all the nutrients off and they don't look too good, right? So let's go find Erin. Erin is the other cow that had a calf and see how she looks. Ah, she's <laughs> on the other side of 92. But compared to 99, remember, this is what 99 looks like. And she's not perfect, guys. She's got a little bit to go. But um, she has good. rebounded pretty well. So let's check out Erin, number 12. Let's go find her. I think. She's the far one sitting way out there yeah, on the she, left. She's hornless. Oh, something else to point out guys while we're here. Here is Stephanie. Stephanie is one of the older cows we probably have. Anyway, when we got her, she was, gosh, 790 pounds or something, 780. And she's gained 70 pounds since we've had her. Now you might say 70 pounds, geez, Jeff, that kind of sucks. It's not like it's that big a deal. Well, when you're 700, and now you're like 860 or 870, that's a big difference. You start breeding a lot better, things of that nature. But also at her age, she's not gonna be just adding 100 pounds every year. She should generally be almost fully grown. So when you added 100 pounds, 80 pounds, whatever it is, that's actually quite a bit. So she's looked a lot better. All right, let's go check out Erin. All right, so here is Erin. She's the worst one that we have right now, confirmation-wise. She broke off both her horns. It's been wet. You can see everything. This is like putting a lady in spandex and then, and then saying, does she look hot or not? She's not going to look that hot, okay? But uh, she is a bigger girl. 99 is probably around upper nines. She's over a thousand pounds originally when we had her. She only came in a little about 830. So she's lost to 250. Um, and she looks like it. She just hasn't responded as well. And this kind of gets me into the, one of the points I want to make mention is, buffalo can lose weight, okay? They're going to lose weight, but they don't always put weight back on as fast. And so in general, it's like grades at school, okay? If you get an F on a test, it's just gonna suck your grade down and it's hard to build it back up. And these animals only grow so fast. So, in terms of like her, she's 200 pounds, 250, let's say, below where she's at. When a buffalo gets into the winter months, they just don't pack on a lot of weight. If you dump a ton of money into them with supplements and everything, you might gain 0.3, a third a pound a day, okay? In a month, you might gain 30, no, 10 pounds. Okay, that's gonna take forever. So when you hit the spring and grasses are now growing and they're all rich in nutrient, you might gain two pounds a day. In the summer months, you might only gain 1.3 pounds. You know, and kind of fluctuation like this. In the fall, they'll bump back up maybe 1.6, 1.7 pounds a day. The point is, if you could average a pound and a half a day through all 365 days a year, you do the math and tell me how much weight generally would you put back on that animal? 400 pounds, 500 pounds, max? So, it's gonna take a little bit Hopefully we can get her back up to weight before breeding season. So that way she'll breathe again, but she's not gonna be breeding now. She's, I, 
I would be shocked if she has a calf. She doesn't. All right, number seven. What's up, girlfriend? Okay, so one other animal we wanted to show you, and I believe this is her, just right up here, is uh, Megan. Now I'm on the test, right? This is like, can Jeff spot his buffalo from that far away? And it's not. That's 30. Dang it. Is that Rachel? Tracy? Where'd she go? There's kisses, I There's believe. Kisses. All right, I want to show you Megan. Megan looked I like... She's butt to us, maybe? She was like bad. Come on, Bartok. Is that her? He looks good when he's wet, actually. You know that? I don't almost want to re-weigh re re him. He's looking good, isn't he? Look at those hips. I love it when they're all like mudded up in He's red so clay mud anyway i wonder if that's, her. if that's her over there all right let's see if we can get past 30. And come mary. on and mary will let us pass Hi, yep there she is hey. there hey. she is Hi, girl. okay so this is megan she has rebounded she's over 1100 pounds now Go figure, huh? 1,100 pounds, and she looked worse than Erin was, so, or is right now. So she's bounced back. So this is an example of, give it 15 months, and you can go from what Erin looking, is looking like and pack on about two, 300 pounds. The moral of the story, guys, is try and keep up to date on your buffalo's health, and don't let them just lose weight out of season unnaturally excessive weights, things like that, because it's just a pain in the butt to, to get them up. It just takes time. You can only pack on so much weight without having to actually like supplement them like tons of feed and everything. I mean, just it gets costly, okay? And everybody right now is pen penny pitching to some degree. So anyway, I think I covered everything with a buffalo. Now, the one thing I didn't cover was the blood. So here's a story on the blood. At the shoot, we were trying to draw blood. We're trying to do pregnancy tests on all the animals. You know, I was figuring that would help me figure out what I'm planning on doing and if some animal that should have been pregnant isn't pregnant, then maybe I would think about selling her or whatever. I don't know, you know, just, it's always good for record keeping and what you're up for. So we got, it's called Bioprin, B-I-O-P-R-Y-N. And uh, it's a self kind of, it's got a little vial, you pop it in there, you take the blood from underneath the tail, that kind of stuff. And our issue was we just couldn't get blood samples well enough in the, in the quantity needed to do this. And we're sitting in a squeeze chute and we're sitting there and we're trying to get it. And if you look at a normal tail, all I can find is cattle, okay? So in the cattle, when you raise the tail up, you grab it and you just raise it. Let me go the opposite way, all right? When you look at it, it'll have like, you're supposed to take it right between, I don't know, two ligaments, bones, muscle, whatever. They tell you to put it in the middle, okay? Pop it in there, put the vial in, and it sucks the blood out. It's a vacuum vial. Um, ours wasn't doing that. I think we were hitting the tailbone or something like that, and we tried going higher, we tried going lower, we tried going to the side, we tried everything else. You know, I've never sucked blood off of anything before, drawn blood off anything before. So I'm just poking it in the wrong spot, and uh, we tried five, six animals. We just couldn't do it, and it just, you know, I could sit there and burn through all these vials, but it wasn't worth it. So the way that Bioprint works is you go get your vial, it has a little label on it, you mark out what animal, a sticker on it, and you mail it in and they send you the results via email, bam, it's done. So when I bought all these, it gave me up to 30 tests that I can get done. If I just burn through all of these things, then I'm just losing all those tests. So. I've got two extra in each, so that's like six extra vials. So when we hit five or six, I was just like, all right, done. You know, we gotta go find the vein. So if you know where the vein is, let me know, but I just didn't find it. So we didn't blood test any of them um, for pregnancy, so we don't know. I would tell you that I'm pretty confident a number of these are pregnant, but my track record is horrible right now. So anyway, I think you did a good job, Ahmed. I really do, your head is huge. Bartok, I think you were actually pretty busy, but Ahmed didn't let you. You know, I don't want to belabor the point, just know in general, all of these animals are looking good. Their weights are all up, despite, the, you know, the issues with worming. Um, and on average, we're doing a lot better. So, still got ways to go, guys. All right, I'm bringing you guys actually over here to come closer to our hay. 
because right now the animals are looking good. We want to keep them good. And I've been doing some research. I've been doing some calls. I will tell you, cattle information is a plentiful. Buffalo requirements for feed and energy and everything else for what to, to feed them are not plentiful. And so it's really just difficult to figure out what's going on. So I'll tell you, we did get some more hay. You probably have seen that. We got some alfalfa hay. It has 21% protein. This is, has 5.7% protein. It's a bump up from what we had. So that's been helpful. I'm kind of looking at what's the value of giving alfalfa hay compared to cubes or other things like that. Alfalfa is 21% protein, the cubes are 20. We noticed this summer we doubled their cube consumption to try and help them add extra weight. And the mothers just still couldn't keep up. So there has to be something with the amount of supplement or kind of supplement you're giving that it just it just wasn't doing it and they weren't getting enough energy or stuff to lactate. So we've got to find something. It's not just protein, but there's energy that goes along with it. And that's the type of foods that you can provide them. So this has an energy reading that we get when we send it off. It says so much for lactation, so much for gain, maintenance, all this other stuff. We can compute that. When we look at the cubes that we have like over here, there's, there's nothing, right? It doesn't tell you anything. And so when you're trying to assess how much energy are you getting, it's like, it's like you don't get anything to look at. Let's see if I can even... So you look at this, and there's nothing in here. It tells you protein, but it doesn't tell you anything for energy calculation. And so I think what was happening was we're trying to do this proteins or giving them extra cubes, but you'll find actually now that I crumpled it up, <laughs> I was talking to a guy and he says, well, this is full of wheat middlings. And wheat middlings is a filler that's kind of used and so forth, but it doesn't have a lot of energy. And it's the first ingredient on this. So I think what we were happening for us was we're feeding protein and protein and protein. At this stage in their life, not growing a lot, but they needed energy and they weren't getting it. So we're trying to balance, do we stick with cubes? If so, when and how much? Or do we transfer to something like alfalfa, where we know the protein very similar to cubes, but we also get an energy reading and, uh, or a uh, energy count, whatever you wanna call it that we can then assess to make sure they get enough energy. So is there better value doing this or is there better value doing cubes? The one other thing that we talked about was just doing a loose feed. So those are processed cubes. What if we just gave like a feed from a mill that is a set protein, but it also has an energy reading and they can increase the energy, they can decrease, they can increase protein or they can decrease. And do we look to kind of do something that's customizable? In general, that question really comes down to what is the requirements of the buffalo that we're looking at here, right? So I've only found one table that has given me any kind of idea what a buffalo requirement is for feed and for energy and protein, right? And I've had to extrapolate and try and research and figure this out. And I've kind of completed my table here, but I can tell you one thing, cubes, I have no idea. Obviously from this last summer, I just didn't do it. What the problem we're having is you're just gonna blow through your protein amount and give so much protein to try and get what you do with the energy that you're just wasting your money on protein. So it's a, it's a balance between energy and protein. And there's gonna be more of this on later videos, but that's what I'm trying to research now to try and help the herd, because it's gonna be different from calves, it's gonna be different from yearlings, and when they start, yearlings start finishing this for meat, or when they finish for breeding, or I mean, all that's different and we just need to be able to dial all that in. So anyway, long story short, we got some alfalfa <laughs> and there's a reason why. I will tell you, I think Rio Max is doing good. We're trying to ration this a little bit because the feed isn't so great that I, I don't know, they're just going through this like candy man and it's killing me. We're like almost halfway through it going on through freak, four freaking months. So, I mean, it, it yeah. Feed makes a difference. Well, and speaking of Rio Max, uh, the bulls found it again. So they're actually over here now eating that. 
in general, we share this with you guys to kind of be an educational thing so you guys can see what happens. Um, as a new time bison producer, we're going to make every mistake that we possibly can. So that way we can advertise it to you guys and you can judge us. Ultimately, we don't want you to do that. But there is a reason we're doing this to show you that there are struggles that happen. Um, there are things that we need to think about. It isn't just throw them out there with any kind of random dirt and grass and say they're going to be fine. So we want the animals to be healthy and we're expecting a lot of calves hopefully this year. I don't see any reason why they shouldn't have been. Um, I think what we've just been doing in the past has gotten us to some point where they can stay healthy throughout the summer, but it's not quite getting us over the edge when they did have the baby. So we're just going to have to keep looking at that and seeing how things go. But uh, otherwise, that's the results, guys. Animals are looking good, always in the research mode, geeking out on Excel spreadsheets and everything on this. I get lost sometimes in my own Excel spreadsheets. But anyway, that's the herd, guys. Let us know if you have any other questions. We're gonna wrap it up here. Thanks for joining along, keep with us. And uh, as we explore bison herd health and uh, kind of go through this whole process, this spring is gonna be exciting. I'm hoping to have more answers on feed and some of the changes we're doing at that point. All right, talk to you later, bye. Oh, yeah.